So hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Redox for Life podcast, and we're your hosts. I am Levi, and this is Lamika Renee. Hey, our main topic today is how service provider, providers are making a difference in their community. And today, ladies and gentlemen, we have the pleasure of speaking with Dr. Stephen Middleton. Yes, thank you for joining us. Well, it's my, it's my pleasure being with you uh, today, for sure. And just to clarify to everyone, I'm not an MD, I'm a PhD, and just want to make sure that we're clear about that. Nice. Excellent. Well, Excellent. Well, we're so excited to have you on today. Um, I'm sure our viewers would love to know who Dr. Middleton is and what inspired you to enter into the career path that you're in. Yeah, I am a retired uh, university professor and author. I've been happily retired for four years. And uh, after retiring, I wanted to do, you know, something in my, with my life other than sit around and, and just uh, have fun. <clears throat> and uh, as, an, as an educator, uh, I wanted to further my interest in business and also improve my health. And I stumbled upon a technology that allows me to do that, to be an educator and also improve my health. Excellent, wow, nice. excellent, excellent. Well said, okay then. So you're, you're, you're a retired professor, what? Tell me what book did you, uh, did you author? What is, and, I mean, what was the topic and what was the? Yeah, I, um, I've written or edited five books. Um, I'm currently writing a book about a judge whose name is Robert H. Terrell, was a municipal court judge in Washington, D.C. My books uh, deal with some of the messy stuff in American history. Uh, my field is U.S. constitutional and legal history. So I've written about American law as it uh, impacts uh, African-Americans. One of my books is entitled The Black Laws, which deals with legislation that the Ohio State Le legislature developed in the 1800s. Mm, okay. Wow. wow. That's interesting. That's interesting. Okay, real quick. Okay, well, you said you do, uh, you stumbled across a technology too that you know that impact your health in a way that's uh, you know that's really changed changed your life or maybe added added more uh, you know made you more healthy. Yeah. Okay, you can know, you talk I, a little bit uh, more about that. Yeah. Yeah. I'd be happy to. Um, I've always been interested in health. Uh, in my case, uh, I have some type of neuromuscular condition that's of unknown origins. So I did have some health challenges, you know, as I got older, uh, I'm, I'll be 69 in, in January. So um, oh, I've hit old man nice. stage. Uh, and so my, my issues included uh, mobility, but also body discomfort. Uh, and there's another part of this is that when I retired, I also wanted to engage in some type of business. So I wanted to improve my health but also wanted to become involved in business. And someone uh, brought uh, a technology uh, to me that's called, coincidentally, Redox. <laughs> uh, I knew uh, absolutely nothing about it. And when she told me about it, um, I didn't believe that anything could help, could help me. The reason being was that my neurologists have told me that they could do a couple of things for me. They could give me assistive devices, or they could write a prescription for me to deal with body discomfort. Uh, I tried some of those uh, drugs and I didn't like the way I felt. So I told my doctor that I didn't want to take those. I returned to my over-the-counter tablets and began using those tablets. And before I started taking Redox, I had reached 10 tablets a day just so that my body would feel pretty good. Now I got the warnings from a nurse you know, who said, you know, you, you run the risk of damaging your stomach lining by taking so many of those drugs, but I had the choice, you know, being uncomfortable or taking the drugs and I took the over-the-counter tablet. So my mindset was, I wasn't sure that anything would help. And when this uh, person told me about Redox, I wasn't too sure about that. So I really told her, no, <laughs> a few times, uh, but fortunately, uh, she was persistent. And I'll tell you this. So I decided to give Redox a, a try, a fair trial. 
uh, not knowing if it would help me or not help me. Uh, so I bought uh, a number, you know, uh, an ample supply of products. And, um, and I don't advise that anyone do what I did. I decided to stop taking my over-the-counter tablets. Now, once again, I want to emphasize these were over-the-counter tablets. These were not prescription drugs. So if they were, you know, had been prescription drugs, I would not have just stopped cold turkey. But I stopped my over-the-counter tablets cold turkey, realizing that within, you know, a few days without them, I would be very uncomfortable. Uh, and I began taking redox. And to my surprise, after the first week, my body discomfort just didn't return. I mean, I, I just, I didn't need to take anything. And it's now four years, it'll be four years in November, it's 2022. I started in November, 2018. I have not had any reason to take any kind of, of medication because of body discomfort once I started Redox. Great, that's wonderful. I, you know, hold on a minute, uh, Dr. Middleton. Hold on, <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, that is awesome. Congratulations, yes, Jim, of regaining your health back. And, and um, you know, you talked about Black history and you talked about the 1800s. And, and we know that, um, what was it, 1865, Abraham Lincoln era, uh, the Emancipation of Proclamation when, you know, he freed the slaves, the Black slaves. Um, but in reality, we didn't know we were freed. And so I, I just know that in, in studying um, a little bit of the, you know, of, of our culture of Black history is that, you know, in that era, we were given no economic base. We were set free, but we were given no economic base. We had nothing. And it just sounds to me like you've tapped into that industry. So congratulations. Well, thank you. Thank yes. you. Yes. Yeah. You know, just to, to play on that for a little bit, you know, um, if you look at uh, the Black American experience uh, in this country, in fact, from the 1600s, when Africans were first brought, brought here, uh, many Africans did engage in economic business activity if they were free. And some of them who had been enslaved were able to hire out themselves as enslaved people to make an extra dollar. There's a lot about the economic, the business activities of Black Americans that we're just not aware of. You know, Lincoln then issued the Emancipation Proclamation in 1863. Uh, Congress, of course, passed the 13th Amendment in 1865, which was the America's first general emancipation statute. And this becomes really interesting. If you're going to talk about that, we can talk about it because it wasn't, <laughs> the, it wasn't the first legislation that freed Black Americans by the, you know, in this country, but it was the first general emancipation statute. Uh, you'll be surprised that the first, a first, the first legislation that freed some black people, and I say some, came in 1787. But that's another conversation. I'll leave that one alone. Uh, but economic <laughs> activity, e economic activity was certainly something that was on the minds of, of, of black Americans. And once the Emancipation Proclamation came, look, I mean, there's so many people began establishing banks. They began establishing insurance companies and the list of business activities go on. So uh, for me to be engaged in, in Redox, uh, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm stepping into a long tradition of uh, uh, people who have engaged in economic activity of African descent since they came to this country. Well definitely, said. Yes, yeah, definitely. Well said. And also profitable. <laughs> profitable for one okay heals your body and you're making money what else could we ask for as a as a population yeah. <laughs> yeah. So there's, there's one thing that i i peeked into uh the website of the center for disease control this the cdc and if your viewers haven't done that you know i would urge you to do it and look up chronic diseases, look up chronic issues. And then they list some, I'm not gonna list them here, but they list up about four or so chronic conditions that face people today, that face Americans today. And then they pointed to the group of Americans who are mostly affected, a higher percentage of them than any other group of American. 
And what I've discovered, especially after being four years in Redox and learning, is that it doesn't have to be that way. That there is a way for people to reverse uh, or even eliminate you know, some chronic conditions by following what I like to call, and if you want to ask me about it, if you have time, I'll be happy to share, uh, is the, the redox lifestyle. And this redox lifestyle, you know, I uh, am, have complete confidence that anyone within 90 days or less, and I'll give it 90 days, but 90 days or less uh, could actually change their health outcomes without doubt, like no kidding. Yes. Mm. Mm -hmm. Definitely, definitely, man. Yes, definitely. I, you know, you know, I suggest that too. I mean, in fact, I think we all share the same sentiment that, you know, which which people should do their research, especially go to the CDC website and, and look at what is is the most chronic and see who's most affected by that, that condition. And, and now that we have something here that we can combat issues, you know, you know, that we that, that, that we mostly experience. That's, uh, it is awesome. Yeah. It is awesome. Well, you know, the, the good news is that I, I, I take Redox with full confidence. And here's why. It's 100% a, it's a non-toxic. It's actually safer than water, especially the water, you know, in, in many countries today. You drink too much water, you could get sick. And <laughs> if you're in an area with bad water, some worse things could happen. And not only is it 100% non-toxic, it has been certified by at least two laboratories to be redox molecules, the same type of molecules that our bodies produce. So there's no, we're not guessing about whether these are molecules that are manufactured in the human body or not. Uh, laboratories have certified that, that it is. And of course, the other lab laboratories have shown that it performs cell signaling and those kinds of things. So uh, I take it with full confidence that it's safe. Yes, definitely, definitely. How um, how how is this so unbelievable that you know you know that something that our bodies produce naturally exists and lives outside of the body? Now we can now consume and put it back in our body as we lose these uh, you know you know these molecules over time, especially on a day to day basis. Mm -hmm. And how how is that so unbelievable now to some people? Yeah, you know, for, for those individuals who may have difficulties believing it, I would just invite them to take a look at the 20th century. Just look back at the 20th century alone, not the 20th and the 19th, but the 20th century, and then look forward into the 21st century. I mean, when the 21st, 20th century started, who would have believed in 1900 that an airplane could take off in the United States and by 1950, fly all the way to Japan and drop a very tragic bomb. So technological innovations do take place. We live through it, you know. Uh, I was born in 1954. My gosh, I didn't imagine a cell phone then, but we have cell phones now. When cell phones started, I mean, goodness, you had to have this big little piece of equipment. Now it's, you know, it's something that can fit in our pocket and we've gone through smartphones. So what I'm saying is simply this is that we live in an age of technological innovation, and we, we experience it every day with our cars, with our phones, and everything else. So in my case, um, even though some people may find it surprising, I'm not surprised. It just seems to be the next logical thing because of the technological age in which we live. And there's going to be more. We're not at the end of this yet. More things are coming out. Yeah, exactly. Yes, it looks true. Yes. So, Dr. Middleton, what is the one thing you wish you knew on the onset of your career? Um, well, you know, I wish that I had known more about, let's call it um, a, a holistic uh, lifestyle. I wish that I'd known about that, not only at the beginning of my career, but also earlier in my life. Uh, by holistic lifestyle, the first thing that I know for certain now it's important for everyone, especially as we age, to take redox. Because mm -hmm. redox is the signaling that takes place in our bodies. Each breath we take, each wound we may have on our hand that has to heal, digestion, everything is affected by redox. So redox is fundamental. That's one thing that I wish that I had known. 
But the holistic, or what I call the redox lifestyle, includes some other pillars. And that includes, you know, making smart decisions in your kitchen. Um, Dr. Lee Osler wrote a book, two books. One was called Redox Matters. The other one is called Healthy Matters. And he really documents, documents clearly that it's important for people to put good material in their, in their body system. So redox, proper nutrition. Um, other researchers have indicated that mindfulness uh, practices, you know, resting, uh, all of that promotes a healthy lifestyle. So to answer your question, I wish that I had known this earlier on, and I think that I could, you know, even be healthier than I am now. So if anyone is curious about whether they can produce positive changes in their bodies, I would say yes. And if they know you, uh, you two, you, you, you powerful couple, I would encourage them to reach out to you because you would put them on the track. But also, I would also encourage people though to learn to make smart decisions in the grocery store and in their own kitchens. Mm -hmm. Because after all, redox is lifestyle. You know, yes. you don't take redox today and then takes it three months from now. I take it every day. That's lifestyle. And just to incorporate some other lifestyle, I like to call them lifestyle hacks into your daily life and just see what happens. Man, that is awesome. <laughs> you know, you know, thank you for that, you know, of me and my lovely wife here being a power couple. She likes that. <laughs> so, always looking for power poses and stuff like that. What do you think about this? But yeah. anyway, I digress that. So, but yeah, that is great, man. You know, I wish I could have known this, man, you know, years ago. Actually, you know, so long ago, I wish I would have known if, uh, you know, if my mother was still here today, I would definitely, definitely, she will definitely be using this drink of redox and uh you know because i because i believe it could have you know if she had access to this now i believe it would have it would have prolonged her life you know would have gave her a more sustaining life and uh you know and things like that so that's that's one thing i i think all the time and uh you know so so i and a lot of times people come to us when it's actually when it's like really too late right to try to uh, you know, to try to change something about your life or your health. And basically, you know, we really can't do nothing about that. All we can do is hey, you need to come to us before things get bad. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I like to I encourage people to um, to be as healthy as they can within their situation. Yes. You know, just be as healthy as you can. You know, as I said, I have a neuromuscular condition, but I can be as healthy as I can in this situation. So what can I do? I can get on, I mean, I'd be able to run down the street, but I can get on my stationary bike and I can ride for 60 minutes. So I can be as healthy as I can mm. in my situation. So uh, it's never too late uh, to be as healthy as you can in your situation. Nice. Excellent. Nice. Yes. So Dr. Middleton, what um, are the biggest challenges in your career or your line of work? You know, yeah, I think that today, I mean, you know, let's face it, uh, people have been burned and lied to and deceived, I mean, you know, around the world. So people are naturally skeptical, you know, of, of things just because of their life experiences. So uh, one challenge is to be patient as we try to educate people of the possibility that they can improve their life. And all of us are engaged in this. If you look at the, at the world now, but I live in the United States, the United States where I live, that all of us who are working to try to better people's lives are faced with the same thing. We got to first educate people on the fact that, number one, that they have the power to improve their situation, be it health, be it finances, you know, we have some power to take care of that. People got to be convinced of that. Number two, proper education. You know, you got to know what to do. Uh, you may want to do something. And if you don't know, know, know what to do, then, you know, or do the wrong thing, then of course you're, you're giving yourself a setback. And the third thing uh, that's challenging is to, is to get people to recognize that we do not walk alone. 
that relatedness in the area of mindfulness, people say that relatedness is important. Relationships are important. People who are on a similar path as yourself is important. So when people get to understand that it's possible for them to make improvement, that's their authority. Number two, competence. They got to be properly educated to know what to do. And thirdly, relatedness to get with some people who could support them and encourage them on the path. Getting that word out, I think, is one of the challenges, at least in, from, from where I sit, that I that I work through every day. Excellent. Excellent. Well said. Well yes. said. This has been great. Man, thank you for all this, this wealth of knowledge, experience, and uh, you know, I mean, education and everything. It's been great. You have shared a lot of stuff in a short amount of time. And it's, uh, you know, it's going to be very impactful for people. People are going to get a lot, a lot from this. And uh, man, we definitely appreciate it. So do you have any final thoughts that you want to leave with the, uh, with the people? Yeah, my final thought is simply this. Um, I, and I was thinking about this earlier today. People apply mindset to a lot of different things like athletics, you know, basketball players, football players, baseball players talk about mindset. And I would like to encourage people to apply mindset to their health. By mindset, I simply mean to believe, have the attitude that is possible for them, any individual, to improve their situation. That mindset is a positive step forward for us all. Excellent. Well said. Well said. Thank you, Dr. Middleton, ladies and gentlemen. This you have tuned in to the Redox for Life podcast, and we're your hosts. I am Levi, and this is Lamika. And uh, so, where can where can people get a hold of you, uh, Doctor Middleton, for some more life changing advice, or where they can find your books? Well, you know the books are all over the place, including Amazon.com. But I'll invite you to just put my email address wherever you place in the description for your podcast, if, if mm. people are looking for a speaker or just someone to commune with, you know, because there are topics that I care about. I care about wellness, um, health, uh, but not only for the physical body, but also our emotional wellness as well. So if people want to con connect with me, please feel free to put my email wherever you post your podcast. Excellent. It will, it will be in the description, ladies and gentlemen. So click the link below for Dr. Middleton. Yes, thank you very much for joining us. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, I like what you're doing. I like Redox for Life. As I told you before you started recording, I wish you had thought of that. I would have still lived. I, I would have had it. Uh, but anyway, I, I like what you're doing and, and best of luck to both of you. Thank, thank you. you so Same to you as well, sir.